Hey everyone, this is Nitro. It is March 26, 2020, which means since it's a Thursday, there is yet another update released on Languissa Mobile on the international server. So with this update, it is a minor update, so not too much has changed, but there's a few useful things that have come with this update. First of all, of course, is that there is the rerun of the Trails in Time first banner with Joshua and Estelle. Second, the Forbidden Battleground, right? Uh, because it's yet another week, the Forbidden Battleground now has the third battlefield available. I'll do the videos on level 60 and level 70, hopefully later today. If not today, it'll be out tomorrow, okay? And then third and finally, with this, with the uh, Estelle and Joshua banner, they have also re-released the Trails in Time first chapter event. So I'm just gonna quickly jump in and I'm actually going to just skip this dialogue quickly to... I'm actually going to just skip this battle if I can. Okay, so I don't want to do the battle right now. But taking a quick look, this battle looks the exact same, right? With the enemy mobs and the preset characters. So you could really refer to my older Trails in Time First Chapter videos if you're having any problems beating any of these maps. I'm not going to re-record them. There's no reason to. The only thing that may change is the challenges, and that's what I'm going to be taking a look at. So from the first section here, we see Invitation Under the Moon. And that should mean I rem there is I have a video on this. So I don't think I even have to redo these videos either. I may for the challenges simply because well, you know what, let's see, okay, if people comment that they need some help with maybe I did something wrong in those past challenges, I'll redo the videos. Otherwise, you can just refer to all my old videos because it looks like the event has not changed whatsoever. Okay. Finally, we can see that there's level 35, level 55 battles, and that means this is an event where you collect points. So you're going to have to grind, and you're going to have to grind up a total of 90,000 points in this event and there's characters you can use who give additional points. Right? So you're going to want to bring a party of all recommended heroes so that you can get additional points that way to make the grind less brutal. And yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. So you, as always, for these events, you want to wait till a level 55 battle is available so you can maximize the point gain per battle because that's three times the point gain, right? And if you add in the extra, let's say, 200% additional points, you know, you, you're getting far, far, far more points from a level 55 battle. Roughly, I think, 450 times 3, which is 1350 points, as opposed to just a mere 450 from the level 35. So it only makes sense to grind when the level 55 battles are available. And it doesn't really matter which battle you grind because this is point based. So you just choose one of them, grind away until you hit 9000. It doesn't have to be done at the beginning of the event, you can do it later on too. So that covers the event pretty much. So finally, I'm going to do a brief summary of the two heroes with this Bracer Blitz emblem, Joshua and Estelle. First and foremost, I will say right now, neither hero is required. I got both of them from back in summer of 2019. Guess what? Both of them are three stars just sitting right here. I've never used them. I've never grinded them up. The only thing I did for them was unlock their Gates of Fate so that they have 15 shards and so I got some rewards back for that. But other than that, I didn't use either one. Okay. The reason for that is because Estelle is basically yet another tank and she's an AoE style tank with lots of AoE skills. But the thing about her is she only guards against physical attacks first of all, so she doesn't guard against magic attacks. And second of all, an AoE attack tank is not very useful for PvE content. So she's basically exclusively meant for PvP. Yeah. And she has various vulnerabilities in that, even in that usage. Uh, of particular note, I don't see very many Estelle tanks nowadays, so just something I would mention. So she's not a required character at all. Okay. 
Joshua, as you can see, I don't have him built. And Joshua is pr really the better hero of this banner. Um, first of all, Joshua is a time and space faction buffer. With the hero, it's a time faction buff. So he's useful there. Second of all, however, it's worth mentioning that Joshua is ultimately like an AoE attacker as well. So he is also really primarily meant for PvP purposes, right? He has Dark Demise for a long uh, range line attack that can also dispel buffs. And then he usually brings uh, the Phantom Raid skill for another AoE attack where he can move forward, AoE, and then retreat. Finally, his third skill can either be a faction buff, ninjutsu, you know. It's possible to bring the faction buff now because you can have six points. And ninjutsu can increase his attack value when he's on uh, terrain with defensive effects. And he can ignore uh, terrain mobility uh, issues. However, Joshua in PvP has become less and less useful in large part because a huge part of his damage dealt comes from fixed damage, right? And the thing is, more and more players have immunity to fixed damage on a lot of their characters, which makes Joshua less and less useful. I'm not saying he's useless, but he has become less useful, and you do see him in fewer and fewer boxes as a result, right? Finally, Joshua does have some utility in PvE content though. And that's primarily for Ancient Beckoning, and most specifically for one of the Ancient Beckoning fights, which is Jomin Gandir. Okay. Because, yeah, he's just apparently he's just very, very useful in that particular fight. I don't particularly know the details about that, because once again, I don't use him. Uh, but if I take a look at, let's say, the individual fights here, right? You can see, okay, for the Drummond Gand here, uh, I'm gonna see, the first, on Rocky Valley server, the number one rank player, Quitaru, uses Joshua in his party, and he has 9.3 million damage. You know. Serious overkill if you're just looking to get S rank, right? Number two as well, Method has Joshua, number three, Joshua, right? Number four, Joshua. Number 5 Joshua, 6 has Joshua, no, I think 7. So the top 7 of Rocky Valley all use Joshua. Right? So it just shows that Joshua has very good utility for this particular battle. Not required to get S rank of course. You know, I don't have Joshua built, I have S rank, I have 5 million damage, but it's significantly lower than some of the other top players by comparison. And I think that is the only battle where he's used, from what I recall. Right. Taking a quick look at the other ones, yeah, I don't see Joshua for top ranks for any of the other ones. So, and there we have it. So, overall, if you were to draw on this banner, you know, you would primarily be aiming for Joshua. But once again, as I said, I honestly feel both heroes aren't required. So take it as you will, basically. Okay. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this video useful. And on that note, Nitro out.